Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking again about regular expressions. Uh, if you missed the first video about regexes, I'll link that in, in the description. Um, but today we're going to be talking about capturing groups and the three, well, I think there's three, right? <laughs> the three types of capturing groups. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into that. Okay, so just to give a little recap, uh, we're going to write a little bit of code. I'm going to be writing in Python today. However, these concepts, I believe, should apply to most regular expression languages. Um, but check your check your particular documentation for whatever language you're working with. Um, but yeah, let's make a little Python script. Um, and we're going to use the RE module. And just as a refresher, if you make a regular expression, re.compile, and you have a parenthesis in it, a parenthesis denotes a capturing group. So if we, you know, do foo bar here, and then we do, I don't know, we'll just make a little program. If name equals main, exit main, and def main, if reg, we'll probably import sys, yeah. Match equals sys dot, no, no, reg dot match, sys dot argv one. So we're gonna try and match the first command line argument that's passed into this program. Uh, if match is not none, print match. Otherwise, print not match. So we'll just have a very basic program here. Uh, and if we run this, Python 3 t.py, if we pass like just foo into here, you'll see that it's not matched. But if we pass foo space bar, you'll see that we're matched. Okay, so just, just a little refresher on what these parentheses do. Uh, so we're going to talk about very specific types of capturing groups today. And the first one is, I guess, the, the most basic one, which is positional captures. And if you look here, so we just have parentheses. And if you just have parentheses, you end up with positional captures. We stick a little breakpoint here so we can look at the code as it runs. And we see this now. You'll see that we have our match. And uh, if we look at match.groups, or um, what is the other attribute? Is it group, group dict, <laughs> this one? Uh, anyway, if you look at match.groups, you'll get all of the positional groups in a tuple. And so you'll see that bar is matched here. You can also call the group function with a integer. So if you look for the oneth group, uh, the zeroth group is always the match of the entire string. This is actually very important um, and a thing that confused me for a long time. So make sure that you're always starting at one when you're looking at positional matches. Um, and even when we get to the other match types, group zero will always be the entire string match. Now there's a shortcut in Python to access groups. This is new in I think Python 3.6, maybe it's 3.5, I don't remember. Um, but you can use brackets instead of uh, calling the group function. It's, it's really just an alias for uh, this function here. So you can see match one or match zero and match one and that pulls out each positional group. Now of course you can have multiple positional groups. So let's say we also captured, oops, oh no, what did I do? Uh, we'll bring those back. Uh, so you can have multiple positional groups. So if we add an F here and we run this again, you'll see that now if we look at match.groups, we have this first captured group here, which is F, and this second captured group, which is bar. So that's, that's positional captures. And again, like if you do match zero, you get the whole string. If you do match one, you get the first group, which is F. And if you do match two, you get bar, which is the second positional captured group. Uh, so let's talk about the next type of captured group, which is named captured groups. And the syntax for this is a little bit different. You do a question mark and a capital P and then brackets around some sort of name. So let's say this was, I don't know, message or something. Uh, and this is how you do a named captured group. If I remember correctly, you can't mix them. Oh, maybe you can mix them. Match dot groups. Okay, so even if you name a um, name a group, it will still end up as a positional group. So you can still access this as match two, uh, but you can also access it by its name, so match message. Now, I tend to prefer using named capture groups in regexes because it makes it a little bit easier to understand the code. Because, uh, you know, like maybe this is a command in a chatbot or something, and you have like a command here, and you have the message as being the rest of it. And so it's easy to see like, you know, command and message. Um, but, I don't know, 
it's it's really up to your preference on which one you want to pick. I find for very simple regexes that you know adding names to the groups doesn't actually add in readability. But if you have like more complicated groups or like anything above like two or three groups, then uh, named captures can really help you out there. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, that's named captures. And the last type of capture is not actually a capture at all. Um, so often times when you're working with regular expression, you need to use parentheses for grouping. Um, so, you know, like say we wanted to look for either bar or baz here. And if we run this expression, you'll see that, you know, we captured, we captured this bar group, but we don't actually need any of this. Like maybe, maybe this was just used to do, uh, either or here. And what you can do in that case is you can turn this into a non-capturing group. And so the way you do a non-captioning group is with question mark colon. <laughs> and so now if we look at this, we look at match.groups, you can see that we didn't capture this group at all because we marked it as a non-captioning group. Anyway, that's the three type of, of groups, uh, or three type of captures. Uh, let me just recap quickly so that you have it all in one place. So the first is uh, positional captures, which is just parentheses. You have uh, named captures, which is denoted with question mark, capital P, and then angle brackets with the name. And then finally you have non-capturing. And those are the, those are the three type of captures that we covered in this tutorial. But anyway, if you found this useful, or if you have other stuff that you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.